Sunline Academy. Isn't it a lovely view all around us? Uh, my name is Jen, and uh, joining me today in the studio is Stacy, who's behind showing these lovely jelly pictures. And this is actually of one of our webcams. So if you need something very relaxing, this is definitely a good one. And then we also have St uh, Carrie that's going to be uh, bringing the questions into the studio. And so today, for all about invertebrates, if you have any questions about invertebrates as we talk about them, that's a little clue into what we're going to be getting into today, uh, feel free to go on ahead and text us at 562-286-1838. And if you happen to be watching this later on, uh, please go on ahead and email your questions down below at live at lbaop.org. All right. So you're wondering what we're talking about. You're like, oh, it's probably jellies. There's jellies that are right behind me right here. And that is one type of animal that we're going to be discussing today. But our goal today is to talk about cnidarians. So we're talking about an entire, or parts, of a group of animals. Now, scientists like to use a lot of different common features to be able to group animals together. And so our goal today, as we get a chance to explore jellies, um, and then also anemones, and if we have time, even corals, is that yes, they are all part of that same cnidarian group. So our goal is to look for some of those common features and see if we can try to figure out what makes a cnidarian a cnidarian. Are you up for the challenge? I am too! So let's go on ahead and get started with our very first animal, and one of my all-time favorites, our jelly is back here. So. Let's go ahead and just take a chance to make observations and look at our jellies that we have. Hmm. What do you notice them doing? Or what do you notice in general? Well, I notice, at least I see a bright blue background, right? And then I have these very colorful jellies. They almost look orangey, yellow, so they kind of have that color to them. It almost looks like they have little strings, two kinds actually. I noticed that there are dark brown black ones that are stringy and long. See some right here. That one's very long. It continues on, right? And then I see some other ones that look kind of fluffy, right? So we have, they're kind of white in color. And they're also kind of in between some of those, those, uh, those black ones right there. Now. They look kind of see-through, right? So we look through our jellies. Yep, see-through to me. And, well, I don't think I see any real eyes. Hmm. I don't think I see, well, much of anything actually on these animals. Ah, here's another good one. So we went from our West Coast sea nettles to our crystal jellies right here. Now these ones, what do you notice that might be the same between our sea nettles and our crystal jellies? Well, I see that same kind of circle body shape that I did in those sea nettles. I also see those long, uh, wispy parts right there that look like long hairs. I don't see any feathery parts that are also coming out like the other one. But, do you see any eyes? Not like the ones that we have. Hmm. Do you see any other parts of our jelly? It's kind of really tricky to see, right? So it seems like, maybe for these jellies right here, that there's not very much really to them. I see a lot of wispy parts. Maybe those are its tentacles, right? Um, and it has one big body that, at least with the other one, we had a chance to see that kind of moved or pulsed around. Now here at the aquarium, we have moon jellies. I don't know if Stacy can get a chance to bring those up in a little bit, but we see two different kinds of jellies so far. And our moon jellies are also kind of clear, like our crystals, but not quite, because crystals are crystal clear. So they are, they are named that way. But here we have our moon jellies that kind of look very similar to the moon, right? They kind of have that nice glow to them. And so here, well, I see some longer parts, but I also see some shorter hair-like parts. Now, I actually see some shapes that are in the middle of our jelly right here. One, two, three, 
look like four different shapes inside of that body. Hmm. So if we look at our jellies right here, our jellies still have that circle body that we're seeing. And in this case, we see some longer parts. They're not as stringy as our other ones. And actually, those strings are the actual tentacles of our jellies. Now, the fluffy parts that we saw on our sea nettles and actually the longer parts on our moon jellies here and ones that were maybe really hard to see in our crystal jellies, those are all oral arms. So we have our arms. We have our little teeny tiny tentacles on this one. And then we have these circles. Now those circles have stomachs in them. So in our case, how many of those stomachs do you see in our jellies? What do you observe? Hmm, I think I can count one, two, three, four. Did you count four? Four of those little U-shapes? Yeah, so those are its stomachs that it has up there within some of those U-shapes right there. One, two, three, four. There we go, that's a great picture of one, right? Ah, oh, that one even has almost like a little crater like the moon, <laughs> right? So these moon jellies have, in this case, four stomachs. Now it's not like a big stomach like ours where we could go on ahead and you know maybe eat some chicken strips or some salad right and we can digest digest all of that tastiness. Can you tell I'm hungry for lunch? Uh, you know but a little healthy a little less healthy all delicious. <laughs> but if we look at these animals their stomachs are very simple. They look like little U's and so with those little teeny tiny tentacles right there how do you think well, how do you think it eats? Well, what do you think it might eat? Hmm. Well, if I look at it, looks like their tummies look a little, kind of almost orangey in color a little bit. And well, with tentacles, do you think they just grab their food? But you'd have to grab it really fast and these animals don't look like they move very fast. They kind of look like they're just floating around, right? That maybe they go wherever the wave or the ocean might take them. And so these animals aren't the best swimmers. They can swim, but they definitely aren't the best. So they probably don't chase after their food, right? Wouldn't that be fun to be able to see a jelly go really quick across and like speed after its fish or whatever it is that it might eat? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe in a cartoon someday, but in real life has yet to happen that we know of, right? <laughs> so these animals are kind of slow. They kind of drift. They kind of look like they almost float a little bit. So maybe they live towards the very, many of them might live towards like the top of the ocean. And so if you're thinking maybe small things, yeah, our moon jellies eat small things. As a matter of fact, one of their favorite foods is right here. This is called a copepod, and it is super tiny, like even smaller than this, actually. It's probably like this big. It's really small. And these copepods are one of the favorite foods of our jellies. Moon jellies, crystal jellies, a lot of these jellies love to eat these little teeny tiny what we like to call zooplankton, animal plankton. And so these little animals uh, are in the water and they're so small that they're really tiny to see, but they get caught on the jelly's stinging tentacles. Yep, that's right, they're tentacles. Now, if we remember correctly, these tentacles are on the outside edges. And we said the stomach is inside in the middle. So how does that food go from the outside edges into the middle. Hmm, here's another good one. So this is also of our West Coast sea now. Here the stomachs would be also inside there and we have longer tentacles this time around. So these tentacles will sting, maybe even a fish this time around, because they're much bigger. But how do they get that food into their mouth? Well if you're thinking oral arms, these little floofy parts, you got it right. So these oral arms help bring the food from the tentacles into the very middle where its mouth would be located. Now it's not an obvious mouth like, ah, my mouth or, or your mouth or maybe your pet 
cat or your pet worm's mouth, right? Uh, but for these friends right here, they have like a little hole that's really hard to see. Now these jellies are mainly clear and that's because, well, they're actually made of over 90% water. Yeah, pretty crazy, right? 90%. Depends from there on the type of jelly. Some may be more or less water, but they are mainly water. They're like little blobs of jello that are moving around. And so these animals right here don't really have, you know, like real eyes to be able to chase right after that food really quickly. They just have a kind of a mouth and a little stomachy area that helps them to digest that food. Now, they definitely have to basically, you know, excrete or poop out anything that they don't digest, right? As all animals have to do. And so these animals uh, would actually probably poop out of that same hole. Yep, multi-purpose. Can't get any more efficient than that. Aren't Nidarians awesome? I know, I know, you're welcome. All right, so we had a chance now to be able to see these jellies, right? Um, some common features that you, once again, we may have noticed is that they are they kind of have a circle body to them. They have these long tentacles that help them to sing, and they have these oral arms that help them to bring that food into the middle where their mouth is and their, their tummies. All right, so Valeria is asking, how do jellies know what food to eat if they don't have eyes? That is an awesome question, right? Like they can't, they can't be like, why yes, there's that delicious copepod. Let us eat, you know? So what they end up doing is they just kind of brush themselves up against that food. Now the way these stinging cells work is they're very small, microscopic small. And inside, it almost looks like a, a teardrop shape, is if you imagine a rope with like a teeny tiny harpoon, like the smallest harpoon you've ever seen. So small you probably can't even see it. And when there's a little trigger up at the top, and when anything brushes up against that trigger, then that little harpoon comes out and it stabs, jabs that particular animal, right? And so that's the way that these jellies are able to eat. They use those stinging cells or nematocysts, as what they're called, to be able to sting their food. Now, jellies don't really sting each other as they have kind of like a protective coating that's like, hey, yo, you're a jelly, I'm a jelly, we're cool, right? Like, no worries there. But they can go on ahead and sometimes eat other jellies um, by bringing them in, but they generally won't sting themselves or their, their other family within that jelly. Um, family meaning like other, maybe in this case, purple striped jellies. So um, it's very interesting the way that these jellies work. All right, so here's a great picture of all of those same features that we talked about. All right, so we've got jellies. Let's go on ahead and move on to corals to see if they have, I'm sorry, not corals, anemones. Keep it Stacy on her toes. <laughs> anemones to see if they have any of those same features. That circle, those tentacles, stinging cells. What else did we notice? Stomachs, mouth, kind of, sort of, right? So those basic same features. So let's see what we notice here on our sea anemone. Move out of the frame a little bit so we can get a chance to see, but what do you notice? Take a minute to notice any of the colors and the shapes. Hmm. Well, looks like it kind of has that same basic circle shape, right? That we can see right here. Oops, <laughs> that was my circle. There we go, that's a little bit better. <laughs> Still learning my shapes, that may have been an oval. Uh, and then we also have these long parts right here. Hmm, what do you think those might be? They look kind of spiky in a way. I wonder if they are spiky. Hmm. If you have any thoughts, feel free to text us down below. Hmm. Now it looks like there's a hole in the middle. That's so interesting. And it has kind of that similar color to what we saw in our, in our West Coast sea nettle, right? Our camera. But it's more yellowy. And then look at that beautiful, that really pretty red. That kind of is outlined all along. Hmm. And it looks like we're talking about that red. It almost has, almost reminds me of like a snail foot, right? It has that little red part right there. Hmm. Now, if you think about it, that's pretty interesting for an anemone, right? Now, we said they're all related. 
jellies and anemones. So can you maybe think about, by looking at this picture, maybe how this anemone lives and catches its food. Now I mentioned our jelly friends don't really swim really quickly, right? They pretty much go wherever the ocean takes them. Well, what about these anemones? Here's a great picture of kind of like a, an underwater tide pool, which is actually where many of these live. And what do you notice? Here we have an anemone, it's kind of pink, it's actually really pretty, right? Has some of those, oh, interesting, kind of those little wispy, spiky-like things right there, but it looks like it's very soft. If we can see it's the ocean water, or the, the sea water that's being blown around. So they look like they're really wispy now that we're seeing that. It looks pretty attached to this rock. So does that one right there, right? That looks like it has the white wispies and the, the yellow in the middle. And it also looks pretty attached to the rock. Ah, so interesting. Axel is ax asking, do these anemones sting? What do you all think? If you said yes, they do. But what parts of these anemones do you think might sting? Hmm. Well, maybe if we know where the mouth is, that might help us to answer that question. You said that very middle part. Yeah, that's its mouth and that's its mouth right there. So how do you think this anemone eats? Exactly, all of these tentacles that we have right there that are all around the outside of our jelly. So in this case, all those tentacles are pink. In this case, all of those tentacles are white. And those are the where the singing cells are, those nematocysts. Yes, they have them too, right? So great question, Axel. Those nematocysts go on ahead and sting their food and bring it to the middle where their mouth is. Hmm. Any guesses to what kind of food an anemone might eat? Here's another great picture of a different kind of sea anemone. I think this one might be of a aggregating sea anemone. Um, one way that you could tell, because there's another friend that's called a giant green sea anemone green is the color of that sea anemone, but this one has beautiful uh, kind of like rays that are coming out of it that you can see all that dark green rays. Kind of looks like, like a sunburst, you know? It's really pretty. And so what do you notice here? And Valeria is also asking, um, you know, do these anemones move? Well, that's a great question. What do you notice? Looks like there might be a rock here. That's definitely a fun brittle star. Hmm. With having a foot, that's basically attached to that rock, these anemones don't actually move a whole lot. Now, some of them can move, not that they move all the time, but maybe if they've, they're in a space and they're uncomfortable, they're like, you know what? It actually looks way better, way over there. Then they can pick up that foot and they can move. Now, it's not very, it's not very glamorous. It's not very, you know, um, very graceful. It's not like they're like, ah, and they move. Instead, it's more of a motion. So basically, if, you, if they took their entire body and they had to go back and forth, like, that's more of what would look like. Pretty spectacular, right? I know. <laughs> right? So these animals, they can move, but it takes so much energy that they only move if they really have to. Maybe if they're like, ugh, I don't like this other sea anemone neighbor. It's way too close, you know? Maybe it's like that little piece of ledge looks perfect. So it all depends on that anemone. Now, maybe that piece of ledge, that part of the ledge, has some really great food, right? Because we never really figured out what these animals might eat. So what do you think? What do you think their stinging cells might want to sting to eat? Mm. If you're thinking plankton again, yes, some of them definitely eat plankton. Like our aggregating sea anemone that we saw earlier. That sea anemone is actually, oops, that sea anemone is actually quite small. So, and they're called aggregating because we see one here because it's a super close up, but many times you'll see them because they, they hang out in groups, they aggregate together. So you'll see a whole bunch of them and these ones might eat some plankton. But what else is really cool about these anemones is that sometimes they have a friend that lives inside of them. Uh-huh, yep, see that green color? 
there are some friends, some, um, some algae actually. It's called zooxanthellae. And these zooxanthellae are little teeny tiny plant-like plankton that live inside that help it give its green color. Yeah, pretty cool, right? And so much like plants, right, when they do their photosynthesis, they take light from the sun and, um, and carbon dioxide and everything else. And what they end up making these algae are sugars, delicious, tasty sugars. And so that can help our sea anemone here eat a little bit. Now they still might have to sting to get some of their food, but those sugars can help them out a little bit. Now there's some jellies that, uh, jellies actually, that do have these same, or do have algae that they grow inside of them to be able to, to eat, which is really cool to be able to see. Um, and so we have, there's a few different kinds of jellies that will farm algae, that will actively grow algae, and that's how they can, can survive too. Kind of a fun side thing. Uh, that would be our upside down jellies, and some of the lagoon jellies do that too. Ah, here's a great picture of a lagoon jelly. And so all of that golden color that you see, a lot of that is the algae. So these little jellies, they are farmers. Who knew, right? Pretty cool. Awesome. All right. So if we go back to that anemone, though, real quick, let's see if we can kind of look at some of those same, uh, see what features we notice um, that make up that, that anemone, right? So I notice that it has a circle shape, right? kind of like our jellies, actually. Um, they seem to have tentacles, kind of like our jellies do. They have stinging cells as well, so that's kind of neat, too. Um, <laughs> fun thing about our, our anemones here, well, those tentacles, when they catch food, they bring it into the very middle, so they actually close up, Ow! right where that mouth is. Now, remember jellies? Do you remember how they excreted their materials? Yep, see that same hole. So the same thing for our anemones here. Huh, pretty fun, right? Awesome. All right, so we've covered jellies and anemones and some of their uh, similar features that they share. Now let's see if we can move on to corals. Because corals can look very different than what we normally believe, um, you know, when we see a coral. A lot of times we see corals actually not like super close up in a zoomed up view. We see them like we do here, right? They look kind of fun, right? They have lots of cool shapes and they have lots of cool colors. Some of them look kind of bumpy here. Others look almost kind of like, I don't know, like a, reminds me of like a shelf mushroom, right? So basically it looks kind of flat and crusty. Others look really soft and kind of feathery. So there's lots of different kinds. But if we get a chance to, to close, to really zoom in and get a chance to look at what those corals look like, believe it or not, they may surprise you on how similar they look to another animal that we've been talking about. So um, as, as a, ah, this is an awesome view. Thanks, Stacey. So here is a zoomed in version. What do you notice? Hmm. Well, they remind me a little bit of the sea anemone body, maybe, but they look like they have smaller little wispies. Maybe those are tentacles. Hmm. They're all grouped closely together. Do you see a circle shape? Hmm. It's kind of tricky. Looks kind of almost like a, a Cheeto, if you will. It almost looks very, kind of the puffs, not, not the crunchy ones. Though, personally, I prefer the crunchies. But like, so these, these almost look like cheese curls, right? So they kind of have an oval shape to them. So if you look at it from the top, it almost looks like a circle, right? Hmm. So let's see maybe if we can, uh, we can zoom in even more to be able to see, because it's really tricky. But something that we can take away from that picture, right, is that they live in a colony. Yep, they live in a group, almost like one big apartment complex. And so, ah, here's another really good one right here. Now, do these remind you of anything we saw earlier? Hmm. Kind of like little sea anemones, right? Yeah, so here we have, once again, kind of like a colony. We have some that are super tall. We have others that are a little bit shorter, but they all have 
kind of like those tentacles. And they are tentacles that are up at the very top right there. And also right there too. Now, ah, for some of them, it's really cool to be able to see it, like this one right here. Do you see what's in the middle? Yep, it's that mouth again. Mm -hmm. And if you're guessing, wait a minute, I see a theme here. I don't think I see any other parts that where it might, you know, use the bathroom. And you're right, for these animals, kind of the same thing. Hmm. So, kind of see that circle shape too right here when we're looking at it kind of from the top down angle, right? And from the side, the body shape is once again kind of very similar to a sea anemone. And so these corals work together and they build a, um, a skeleton and the corals basically pop out of that skeleton and work together to feed and eat and live together. And then as they successfully eat and feed and survive, then their, their apartment complex gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Now, some of these apartment complex do take, you know, a wide variety of shapes because we zoomed in and we saw that shape. But if we zoom back out, right, this is a great view of our live coral exhibit. Um, and this shows you a little bit of what these different apartment complex can look like. All of these different shapes and all of these different colors, right? So here I see some orange. That one looks a little purpley pink. We have some yellow ones and some of that color also comes from the algae that lives inside it. Yes, so isn't that funny how some of the common features kind of go from animal to animal, right? Some jellies go on ahead and they can farm some of that algae, not all of them, but a few. We have some anemones that also have some of that algae inside of them. And same thing for some of these corals too, which is really cool. Now we saw those, um, each one of those is actually called a polyp and they all sting together to be able to get their food. So they too have those nematocysts or those stinging cells on them. Mm. Looks like we have a few questions coming in. So let's see, Ali is asking, do jellies ever get their tentacles tangled? That is a good question. Now, if they're out in the wild, usually they'll just kind of trail along, right? And so that makes it nice and easy. But every once in a while, there is potential that they can maybe get tangled. But for the most part, here we have all these jellies, right, all together. And look at that. Not too tangled, which is really cool. They're pretty much all straight. Very cool. Thanks, Allie, for asking. All right, Perry is asking, can jellies eat a sea anemone? Oh, that's a good question. Hmm. Well, if we think about our jellies here, and where they're living in the ocean. They're normally up at the top. Some of them are deep sea, right? But they're usually living in and around lots of water. Our sea anemones, on the other hand, they like to live in rocks, kind of um, on the side, right? Rocks and on the ground and all around. So here, right, here's a great view of those sea anemones. So usually they won't be next to each other in, in real life. Now, and their food would be a little bit different too. Now, if it's just a I wonder if question, you know what, scientists ask those I wonder ifs all the time, right? And they're able to do those experiments. Not that I'm saying you should put a jelly and a sea anemone next to each other, right? But wouldn't that be interesting to, to kind of understand what eats what, right? Um, and so that is a really great question. Thanks so much for asking. All right, and Olivia is asking, do you see anemones grow back their tentacles? Hmm, that is a good question. I'm not sure about that. I feel like, yes, they probably would. Looks like Stacy is also leaning towards yes, too. Um, cause what, so what's really interesting, and unfortunately we don't have a ton of time to go into it, is that these sea anemones also have fighting tentacles. Yes, they can do battle with one another. It's really hard to see these fighting tentacles on an actual anemone. Oh, looks like Stacy is saying, yes, they can grow them back, which is good to know. Thank you, Olivia, for asking, because now we learned something new too. Uh, but with these fighting tentacles, they will do battle with each other when they're really close, and they will sting each other. And they will sting until one of them's like, ugh, I can't handle it anymore. And then that sea anemone will graciously, right, swim away, <laughs> like we talked a little bit about earlier. 
And so they will grow those singing cells back eventually. I think it takes a few hours to grow those uh, battle singing tentacles back. Uh, sea anemones, really cool animals. All right, and uh, our last question, uh, Valeria is asking, how are coral reefs born? Well, it all starts uh, probably from when a fertilized egg, super duper small, finds its way, grows to become a type of animal plankton. And this animal plankton finds a way to be able to settle down on, um, sometimes it's sand, sometimes it's something hard, and they will go on ahead and eventually start creating a whole new corals, which is pretty amazing. Other times, the corals will actually split apart and they will have, and they will make uh, duplicates of themselves. They'll make two versions of themselves. And they might split apart and make another two, basically same copies of themselves. And so there's lots of different ways in which corals can grow. And some of the strategies depend on that type of coral, because some corals are really fast growing, others are really slow growing. And so I think each coral has a different way that they choose to really start a new coral reef. So hopefully that helps answer uh, a little bit of your question there. All right, well, unfortunately, we are just about out of time, but let's see if we can recap and try to answer that question of what makes a cnidarian a cnidarian. If we think about many of those common features, well, that round shape was really common, right? That we saw right here, Oops, right here. Hmm, so that's actually definitely a feature. It's called radial symmetry. These animals have that radial symmetry that's that basically that circle shape. And if you think about like a pizza, for instance, right? Probably cheese pizza, unless you put out your pepperonis all equally. But you can go on ahead, no matter which way you cut it, it looks exactly the same, right? Um, and so same thing for these jellies right here. No matter which way you look at it, it looks pretty much exactly the same. It's radially symmetric. So that's one common feature of these animals. Another feature are those stinging cells, those nematocysts. All of the cnidarians uh, have those stinging cells that help them to be able to eat. So that's another common feature. Now, a third common feature is that they don't really have, they have minimal organs, meaning that they don't have, like I mentioned earlier, stomachs like you and I do. You know, they don't have real, like, eyes like you and I do that are really developed. Uh, you know, they, they eat and poop out of the same hole, right? So these are very simple animals. But the cool thing is about all of these cnidarians is that they have been around for many, 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 many years, right? So the, though they are very simple, they have found the key to success and uh, the key to my heart because I love cnidarians and I hope you do too. So once again, thank you so very much for joining us. If you do have any questions, um, you know, and it's unfortunately towards the end of our class, but if you're watching this from home at a later time, please feel free to go on ahead and email us right down here below at live at lbaop.org. All right. Thanks everyone for joining us and have a great rest of your day.